And now for our uh, next presenter, it's uh, Tom Niesgoda, uh, a member of the Scree core team. And Tom is going to be talking about one of the uh, headless implementations of uh, View Storefront, the first version of the V2. And uh, Tom, please do take it away. All right, thanks, Mike. And hi, everyone. Uh, let me just uh, share my presentation. I'll be what I will be talking about today is Fear Not. And that's a store we developed about two years ago in 2019. And uh, this store is uh, it sells premium apparel. Uh, we have uh, a uh, social uh, network where we promote uh, Fear Not and what Fear Not stands for on uh, social websites like uh, uh, Facebook and Instagram. So really what we want Fear Not to be is not just a store, but also um, a web of different websites. And we want to gather people together um, uh, in a more like an experience really. And so during this presentation, I will tell you how the store works, uh, its social features, and uh, well, we're really talk about everything. Uh, so since, uh, so how we uh, developed Fear Not, how it all started, and uh, where we are at right now, and where we are going. Um, right, so that's the short uh, introduction. Let me make this. Uh, full screen like this. So, fear not uh, uh, is promoted on pages like Instagram and Facebook, and uh, we link to the store from there. But the integration goes both ways. So we also um, enhanced spree to um, link to Instagram, link to the posts that influencers we work with uh, uh, present uh, about Fear Not. And um, so um, we actively promote this, uh, this store on media websites. Uh, technically, how it works is that we have two major parts. Uh, Spree, of course, as the backend that uh, we use to manage products, uh, manage users' baskets and orders. Um, and then we have View Storefront. So in case of Fear Not, the storefront is completely separate from Spree. And uh, well, it's been up and running for the last two years with minor adjustments. Um, Spree offers uh, an interface to communicate with uh, called API v2. And uh, since we started developing Fear Not, it's been expanded so you can do even more with it than at the beginning. Um, but what's important is that you can go through the, the entire process uh, from uh, picking products and through adding them to your basket and then purchasing them. And you don't have to use anything else. You API v2 that Spree offers is enough. So we wanted Spree to be pretty much stock for this project. Um, what we did add were uh, payments. So when you use uh, the store, uh, you can pay, pay by a credit card. There's an extension to, for Spree that does it. Uh, in our case, we integrated with Braintree. And we added some social extensions to Spree as well. So um, we added an Instagram jam that allows Spree to fetch posts from our own business account on Instagram and also to fetch posts by hashtag. So if you go to uh, Instagram and you search the hashtag do fear not, you will see that some of the posts found there are also uh, displayed uh, in the store. 
these are posts from some of our influencers. This is, these are posts that like the brand and uh, we really like displaying them on the website. So, um, so we can appreciate that people are actually wearing our products and they have a similar lifestyle as we do. So, so that's one integration. Another is uh, an integration that expands Spree with an extra promotion. Uh, we generally call it re referral, referral award, rewards. Um, what th this does is we share some of the profits from running the store with our influencers mm, and they get notified of what's going on uh, in the store. Uh, so again, it goes both ways. Uh, we promote Fear Not uh, online on social websites and uh, Fear Not promotes those places, uh, the Fear Not store promotes those places too. In terms of view storefront, we um, ha used the default theme as a, big, as a start, uh, made it uniquely Fear Not, so designed it so that it go along uh, with the brand. Mm. Of course, we also added some analytics extensions um, and we added extensions that uh, have a counterpart in Spree. So there's an extension for payments that allows displaying a form for entering uh, credit card information that then goes to Braintree for processing. Mm. And we added components that display Instagram posts. Um, so uh, when you go to the dofearnot.com page and you scroll down, you will see that we display a whole bunch of posts from Instagram. Some of them are even videos. And you, when you click on those posts, you'll be directed back to Instagram. These posts are also integrated with the store uh, in so much, such a way that um, you can uh, click buy it next to the post and you will be directed to the products that's being displayed. So if a product is, uh, is displayed in one of those posts, uh, we can link it to the website and continue uh, and have the person visiting the website look at the product and possibly buy it if they like it. Um, so that's in terms of the adjustments we made to Spree and View Storefront. Um, one thing I would like to talk about that is built into View Storefront is support for PWAs. Uh, so mm, when you visit dofearnot.com uh, and you on your mobile phone, let's say, and you click the share button uh, in your browser, you will see an option to add Fear Not to your homepage. Uh, when you do that, uh, it will uh, behave more like an app separate from your web browser. And that's a cool alter alternative to having a native app for your store. Uh, PWAs are only getting more powerful, so it's definitely an interesting alternative to native apps. And in case of view storefront, you get it pretty much out of the box. Um, so uh, this is how uh, the process works on mobile phones, but it's also already supported on tablets and desktops. And let me quickly show you how it works on desktops. If I switch to my browser, see the other tab. So as a new user, when I go to dofearnot.com, uh, I will obviously see the website, but also uh, there will be this extra button in the corner. It says install Spree PWA. If I click on that, uh, Chrome, will ask me if I want to install it. Let's say yes. Once I do, uh, this is what I get. So it's a separate window. Uh, 
And there's a separate app in my operating system that I can use to run Fiona. So that's a pretty cool alternative to a native app. And it has the same features as the website. So you can see uh, we have uh, Instagram posts right here. Uh, I can click buy it to be redirected to a product page. So it still all works. In reality, the stack is a little more complicated. And uh, I'm sure you uh, already heard from other speakers that um, you need to adapt uh, uh, information that flows between the storefront and the store that manages products and orders. And so we had to do the same thing with Fear Not. Uh, we created a separate project called Spree 2 VS that does this thing for us. And it's independent from Spree and View Storefront. And it handles the data flow and requests that go from Spree to View Storefront and vice versa, so that these two services understand each other. Uh, we developed this project in about three weeks. So that was uh, three months, sorry. So that was the time we needed to uh, release the first production version. Uh, we did upgrade it here and there over time. Um, and we had the advantage of having a few uh, experienced developers working on it and a cross-functional team. So not just developers, uh, but also graphics designer, uh, product, project manager. And uh, with the help from the view storefront team, we managed to uh, set both of these uh, services up so that they could communicate with each other. So Spree and view storefront aren't ex don't have the exact same interfaces, uh, but similar enough that uh, we are able to translate uh, uh, what uh, view storefront uh, expects from Spree uh, the other way around. We hope to upgrade uh, View Storefront to the newest version of Spree. Uh, right now, the official version is 4.2, but uh, we are already integrating 4.3 and we're, we are close to finishing. Um, because we used just a few extensions in Spree and View Storefront, so far it's an easy process. Uh, actually, uh, it should get even easier later when newer version of Spree Version of, versions of Spree come out uh, because Spree is more powerful than before when we started developing Fear Not. So uh, for example, and what is important for us is that Spree supports uh, multiple stores and Spree also has multi-currency support integrated in it. It wasn't the case when we started with Fear Not um, but we're hoping to use the integrated uh, functionality uh, in the newer versions of Fear Not. And because API v2 uh, provided by Spree is stable, um, uh, upgrading our Spree to view storefront uh, middleware that translates requests was easy. Uh, we had to make some slight changes uh, to, uh, to the TypeScript that we wrote for that project. Uh, but overall, it was smooth sailing uh, without any major uh, hurdles. Um, so once pre 4.3 comes out, we hope to have, we hope to be using it in Fear Not as well. So that's about it. Um, there's of course way more about view storefront and and spree and how we integrate both, um, but that was a quick introduction to how they work in Fionot. I hope you visit thefionot.com and check out how this platform works, <laughs> uh, especially the PWA part. Um, PWAs uh, work pretty well already, and they're supported by major uh, companies like Google. So. 
uh, they will only become more powerful as we go. Thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, uh, so in terms of SEO, uh, a good idea is to do server-side rendering if you really want to make it great. Uh, the crawler that Google uses uh, understands some JavaScript, uh, but if you want the best SEO, I would say it still needs server-side rendering. And View Storefront supports that. Um, we actually do server-side render if you're not, to a degree. And then if we need to render some things, we can do uh, Ajax calls in the browser to fetch extra information uh, that we need after the user navigates between pages or performs some action on the page. So I would definitely recommend server-side rendering. Um, if you're using React, Next.js is a good choice. It allows you to um, create static pages or server-side rendered pages. Um, so, so if you add Vue and React, you have good tools to uh, improve SEO. Another thing is that uh, when you have an e-commerce store, there are certain standards that allow you to describe the products you're displaying um, that search engines understand. So if you want to make sure that search engines will display res results for your website uh, well with, you know, product images, descriptions, prices, um, you should definitely look into uh, providing extra meta information on your website that these engines can find. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, of course, you should disable some pages from being crawled, like uh, the basket page probably check out because that's what web crawlers don't need to know about. Um, you can uh, ensure that the search engine finds uh, pages on your website by adding them to sitemaps. Mm. I think now that's it. Excellent, thanks, Tom. So there are some more questions. You know, the deeper we dive, the more questions we get. So uh, thank you for your time to to present to prepare for this uh, for this talk. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we know you're uh, quite a busy uh, man, and uh, you could have you know developed some crazy awesome things in the uh, you know instead of just talking to us. So thank you so much. And if you could take a little time to uh, respond to those questions in the chat that would be just awesome and in the meantime we'll just uh, move on to the next uh, presenter thank you much thank you so much thanks it was a pleasure see you okay.